Hey, and welcome to another video on landing page feedback. Today, I'm taking a look at productfeedback.com. And this website is specifically been submitted to me by a user. And therefore, I am taking some time to go in depth into what I think could be improved. As usual, I'm going to divide this this presentation this video into three sections I'm first of all going to talk about the design secondly I'm going to talk about the various blocks of HTML the various blocks that are shown into this website and then ultimately I will talk about the copy and what I think works and what doesn't work and give you some kind of generic scoring uh, or, or rather a score that will basically put you into my, my matrix of evaluation. So without further ado, let's talk about design. Um, I've been looking at this website for the last couple of days and the things that I've noticed from a design perspective is that there are some inconsistencies when it comes to, um, for example, the font of this website. I'm not I'm I'm not sure if there is an error in loading the fonts from an external website but I think these are like the default fonts that you know when you create a landing page for the first time or if you're just writing basic HTML you're getting this font here I've tried to load this website onto my mobile phone and in the same way like the font seems to be just like wrong. I don't know if it's something wrong on my side or something has been misconfigured on the website, but I don't think it should look like that because I don't feel like the font goes well with the rest of the website. The second thing that I noticed in, uh, in this website from design perspective that I wasn't too sure about was the fact that the website itself isn't really responsive. So if I show you here, Okay, there's some errors so if I go here at the top and I set my phone to be an iPhone X and I refresh the page just to be sure you will see that the the text is being cut off there's no scrolling left and right only up and down and therefore the especially in the header it's it's a little bit weird and you can see how the text throughout the website also is a little bit missing something like here it's not aligned properly so the phone is still missing the buttons are not aligned um, I can't click on the images the images are very small and therefore on, on the phone you know even at 100% I wouldn't I, I'm not able to to see what the image is about so at this point from a design perspective why even show the images right if you can't click them so I would consider reviewing this uh, because it hurts it hurts the mobile experience and as you know a lot of people browse the internet from their phone from their mobile devices and they would not have a great experience uh, as another thing that comes to mind I like how you've highlighted this call to action button here and it stands out from the rest of the buttons which are rounded and they also use a gradient I'm not a huge fan of gradient like buttons I like specific you know one sided colors so to speak but here you have basically changed the style of the button and I think it'd be more interesting if you change the text here the color of your of your link to be a darker color maybe a blue or a black or or something like that because I don't think that white on green on white makes the button stand out as well as it could be if it was a different sorry a different color talking about layout again there are definitely some some issues here with the with the product hunt button not up you know not being synchronized aligned rather so yeah another thing design wise that I'd like you to do or think consider is if you make this FAQ section like collapsible so that you can click on them and they collapse and they open uh, as you click them because I don't think you really need to have all this scrolling happening so um, that's definitely 
let's take a look and then your navigation has two items fair enough but yeah so so design wise there's definitely some work you can do um i'm specifically not a designer but as a consumer i can tell you that this does not feel right into my in my eyes right as someone who's visited hundreds of landing pages throughout you know throughout the last couple of months and i made videos for each one of them i don't think this is it's a, it's a good representation of your product it doesn't make your product look good so with that being said i will move on to the next part of, of this review and that is the blocks right so like the sections of your website so i'm going to go back into full screen mode get rid of the web console okay so what do we got here so we have get customer feedback build products that people love and i think that is that's you know it's very generic I, I won't be i won't be lying but at least you have a you have a header you don't have a subheader because you have this like pre-header here so, so i've never seen a lot of people using this because usually when you read left you know da up to down you know up from up on you know towards the bottom rather you would have you, this would be like an h0 almost right like without talking about html tags but then you have an h1 and then an h2 so i would move this one i would not make this i would move it move it down here or if you want to do if you want to have powerful affordable and insightful then i would add some text here that explains a little bit more clearly to your visitors what are you offering why should they care how do you wow them what is the wow factor that captures the the essence of what you're selling or you're trying to introduce them for a sale you can use a question you can use you know the the fomo the fear of missing out technique you can shock them you could say i'm making examples now but it could be you know did you know that 99% of products don't ask for customer feedback? And then the subheader could be like, we make it super super simple to get customer feedback with powerful, affordable, insightful features that people who build products love, right? That would be an example. You know, I'm not a copywriter. I'm doing, I'm, I did this on, on the fly, but it gives you an idea of how I would place it. Let's talk about your 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 image here the image here is it's good i like it it's cute you know it's definitely been put together by someone and you either bought the package or you hired someone to design this but there's something missing right is how is this image here how does it link to the text that you've had guide customer feedback build products people love so what exactly am i looking at here there's four little people you know figures sitting on a pedestal and they are i guess analyzing the data of a da from a dashboard so i would instead of having this which is very generic why not put a screenshot or a video of your of your product maybe something where there's a face of a real person being happy or a person thinking about you know the data that they're going through and because that's what kind of the sentiment that you want to 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 provide the audience that's visiting your that's visiting your website with is the fact that you're turning maybe something that before was hard you know the the thinking kind of pose you know where people are holding their chin and they're like okay hmm i wonder what people think about our product into like a happy face where they're like okay people like our product i don't have to do all the work in excel manual spreadsheet or gathering feedback and through questionnaires that are all over you know google drive dropbox etc etc another thing that's missing here it's the lack of a risk reversal uh sub call to action text and that usually on a lot of website that's usually something that says you can try it for free for 14 days no credit card required or maybe it says you know free during beta access something like that because you want to give people the the feeling that you know it's super simple to get started and there's no risk for them that's why it's called a risk reversal the the other thing that i just noticed now i should have noticed that in the previous section the design section is that there's a weird animation going on here with the colors 
like flipping from left to right i don't think that's very you know in line with the current trends of design you know a lot of people like very subtle animation almost like this breathing animation here on your right side i like the animation i just don't think it's the right it's the right image that you should show as someone loads into your website and then you have like different sections here um this one is pretty much what an h2 would do right like so instead of having an h2 on your button you kind of go into detail about what the what the text sorry you go into detail with the text about what your product does a little bit further down which is under the scroll so a lot of people usually tend to put the h2 under the first scroll because that's what you know they have you know a lot of people just have five seconds they load your website they read this they scroll they ignore this section and they just go and they keep scrolling they see some screenshots and then they keep scrolling and then either they scroll back up and reread it again or they just bounce and they leave your website you'll see it if you install a tool like full story or anything that gives you a full a few view of how people visit your website I've set up full story on a couple of websites. It's a very powerful tool. I'm happy to talk to you about it if uh, if you if you're interested in knowing more about full story or any of the competitors to full story for that matter. And uh, so, what do we have here? So, there's no testimonials. We have three, and, and a lot of people like to start with testimonials because it it adds to that social proof. But the next thing we're gonna look at is there's these three blocks. These three blocks here are not really benefits and they're not really features, right? I mean, metrics you love isn't really a benefit. A customer profile, that's definitely not a benefit. That's a feature of your product. Um, and, then, and then here, deliver value, that is a very generic benefit that any business in the world can claim to deliver value otherwise it wouldn't be a business um post you know the postman that delivers the mail to me delivers value to me because they deliver the mail directly to the inbox i don't have to go and collect the mail by myself from the post office so that's i would i would think about this um section here instead what you want to do is you want to talk about what are the most important benefits that a person would receive as being a customer and using your product and that would be simple metrics gathering you know the metrics that matter to them so maybe you have the ability to out of the box like you say here configure and see the metrics that you require so it's not just metrics you love right it's it's the section where you talk about the benefits it's the section where you talk about you know the ability to create custom uh, customers profiles to inspect into their behavior so maybe the benefits here are like you know see the behavior of your customers get the metrics that you need at a glance and then here is you know powerful insights to take your product to the next level like gain that competitive advantage you know in an automated way or something right like it could be something else there's this i like this subtle animation here um what i don't like then is this animation down here you see this how it expands with what this seems to be like a this one here looks like a toilet a uh, toilet roll a paper uh, I think it's something else I'm not really sure what image it is it looks maybe like also could be a light or a speaker and then here you have a, a chart right like a 3d chart so this one here is kind of like a nudge to tell people that if you sign up, you will get early access. Unfortunately, though, you're not following up with a button to sign up. So that makes people have to scroll up and down to find that button. And then you hit them with a product hunt button that makes sense to have a product hunt button. But I don't think this is the right, you know, the right seat, the right place. The block doesn't fit into the narrative. Um, let's talk now about your next section here customer insights like never before so this is very marketing that's fine and there's a screenshot but you're missing text right like you're you don't have text here that explains what kind of customer insight are you getting what is the benefit to me of having this customer insight because I still don't know what customer insights I can get 
So I look at the page and I can see sign up date. I can see what city they're from, from the customer. So basically it's like a CRM, right? Um, and then here, after the screenshot happens, there is, I guess what this would be kind of like the, the subtitle of the first, of the first feature, right? So customer insight, like never before screenshot, which I think shouldn't go like that. You should probably use the Z pattern where you have the text, the H1, H2, the paragraph, and then an image here. So if we were doing it for your website, it would be customer insights like never before, organize your customer with cohorts, group customer based on almost all this text here, here, right, like that, and the one from above here, and then the image, this image that's here, you should have it as a square here and make it clickable so, you know, mobile users can also see it. And then you have a button that's requesting free early access. So what's the point of having a button here when you already have a button everywhere else on the website so far? You already had it at the top. You forgot it down here, but now suddenly it's here. So a lot of people think that adding buttons under features is kind of the way to go because you think that people will see the feature and they'll want to sign up. Well, I think if you did it for benefits, then that would work, right? So organize your customers with cohorts. Like that is a better text than this one here. So I can see how you're wanting to add this button here. I just wonder if there is enough value at this point delivered to the audience that they just want to sign up after reading that. That's something you can easily A-B test. And then it's kind of the same here. Um, or actually, no, see, like I... I See, this is a this is interesting. I think this is a this section here is just itself, and then this experiment stuff here is oh maybe I mean it's very confusing. Is this a different section? Have you changed the the orders? Now you have an image followed by text followed by a paragraph. So like image H two paragraph button. I think that's what's going on, right? So is this create create hypothesis and gain insights? So here you create experiments like hypothesis and then you gain insights. So maybe that's what it is. And then let's see what this last one is. Customer profiles for deeper insights. So it's all about insights. I think you can almost like animate these three screenshots into like, you know, one, two, three, or like maybe something that flows even better together and just do one section about insights. And you can tell them, you know, uh, you get, you know, basic customer insight. You can organize uh, your insights with you know cohorts and other tools and ultimately you can create hypotheses and find out more insights and then even deeper insights so there's a lot of insights 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 but i fail to understand why you didn't group them all together into like a more concise experience now this this is a different feature capture interviews in a customer profile so the benefit is instead the benefit would be here instead of saying you know what the feature is what is the benefit don't lose your interviews anymore have all your interviews organized that's the benefit upvote upvotes to prioritize what to build next again the benefit is that you have a single view to prioritize your next sprint or your next product uh features awesome roadmaps to show customer the way um that is a feature which also is a benefit, right? You can show customers the, 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 the roadmap. And the text here is, it's fine. It could also be rethought out to be more benefit centric where it's like um, having like a, a one tool to show the roadmap to your customers. Um, like from, from what, like what I'm trying to say is like from one platform, you can do all of this. Next level, change logs to update customers. That's another feature. Next level is very marketing. That's fair enough though. Change log to update your customer. Again, the, the, the benefit is that you have a one platform, one stop to send change logs to all of your customers at once. So like the benefit could be uh, one click uh, diffusion or one, one click dissemination of change logs or one click emails with all your change logs to your customer base. 
and then the text here could say, you know, like like just like you say, a more exciting way to update or engage users. Um, display updates anywhere on your site. Share important news and events. You know, whether it's social media, it's email. You know, make it look good. So basically, the benefit it's not only the fact that you can communicate very quickly the change logs, but you can also make them look beautiful. So it's like beautiful and easy to spread out change logs, right? And then this one is, I love this one, the, you know, the expectation, um, the, the rice model, right? Um, this one here is, is it, it's lacking almost like a screenshot, I think. Uh, no, here it is. Here's the, the reach impact. Okay, so um, again, I would maybe try to make these blocks using that Z pattern that I mentioned a second ago. So you have like an image, you have text, then you have text and then you have an image and it follows like that and try to group them as much as possible so that you only have three and then we're hit you know we're getting hit back with this kind of like weird like toilet roll and uh, this other thing here and luckily on this one there's a there's a call to action with an email name and email box and the text says access to the public beta is is by invitation only refer your friends get early access so if you refer 20 people you get lifetime access etc etc this is pretty convincing i like this i could probably it could probably use with some bullet points um but specifically you know you put your email you accept and then what happens here interesting and then you can oh okay and then you can just get access this part here you're Doing it again, you're doing it doing it again. Um, you're just randomly dropping the the product hunt stuff. Instead, what you should do is you should add social proof. You have whether you have testimonials, awards, you have some ratings. You know, this is this is kind of like a rating, but you should strive to get more testimonials, more more stuff out there. The reason why I say that, and it's probably hard hard if you don't have a lot of early access users. But you can still ask friends and family to try your product and give you an honest overview, an honest, uh, you know, review or a testimonial that you can put up there. Nobody is going to know if your best friend also left you a testimonial. And there's nothing wrong with asking best friends for testimonials as long as they communicate, you know, the benefits and the value delivered by your tool to them, right? And now this text, uh, this section here, uh, the FAQs, these are interesting, but they shouldn't be un like uncollapsed. They should be collapsed instead. That would make for a much better experience. And then again, I would try not to replicate the same blocks over and over. You already had it twice, right? Like you have it up here, you have it down here, and you have it here in the middle. Instead, what you want to do is you could add uh, a video you could add something like a link magnet so what a link magnet does it's basically you have some text in a section similar to this but it would be like you know something like schedule a free consultation and i will show you how our tool will in 10 minutes change the way that you gather product feedback on your product and then you ask for their email address and then you put some like the compelling text here maybe like an image of your face like behind a screen that's like giving like a, a consultation for free, right? And um, something like that, so that you try to change the way that people um, perceive your website at the last bottom of the page. You're, you, the way, but what I mean by perceiving is like, not only you're trying to sell them something, but you're, wanna, you're trying to give them something unique, something possibly free that nobody else gives them. And that's like the consultation. And maybe a lot of people are just wanna get the consultation prior to spending money. And that's where the lead magnet comes in. You're also kind of missing like the footer. Uh, there's not much going on here in the footer. I, there's no about you page. There's no terms of service out here. There's no contact page and it's kind of like fishy. If I were to look at this website for the first time, it's all about trust, right? So you're not really hitting it without having a proper footer. So now let's move on to the third part of this video and that's the language. So let's talk about language for a second. 
the first thing you want to do is you want to get out of, of your website. You want to immediately communicate the value proposition. So what is the goal of your homepage? It's to get early access to users. So you need to communicate with your users what the value proposition that they will be getting from you know, signing up to your product. And here you said, get customer feedback, build products people love. That's not a valid value proposition because you can get customer feedback with notepad and like a piece, a notepad and a pen and a pencil and build, build products people love. Um, I would argue that's not a very good value proposition either because that's just a, a, like a goal, right? That like everybody has. You're not adding value to them in this section. Another thing you're doing is you're not really focusing on who is your target audience. What's their biggest pain point? And usually it's like product managers, you know, people who work in product and the fact that it's everything is so disconnected that they have to use multiple uh, Google Docs, uh, you know, pro project management tracking tools, etc., etc. And then the third thing about language here at the start is you want to think about how did people heard about your website for the first time how are, did they come from like a, a web search are they coming from word of mouth are they coming from indie hackers or twitter and then maybe based on the audience and, and the way that these people find you you can use text to be a little bit more cheeky or a little bit more um, objective or rather subjective to them or a little bit more you know finely tuned to the audience try not to sell the product right don't sell like the features sell the benefits sell the outcome what happens once you use your product another thing that you don't make much use of it's data points it'd be amazing to see data points saying like you know we've had this product in trial for six months and the people that used it have increased their productivity by 20 percent and they've saved 20 hours uh, a week or something right like data is does a lot for for, for selling and what sets you apart from the competition? You know, when if I scroll down to the footer, a lot of people, whoops, in their footer, they put like them versus the competition, like why are we better than uh, some other product management tool, like, you know, probably probably something, some stuff that, you know, like a CRM that connects to Jira. And, and you need to explain that. How are you better than them? What sets you apart from the competition? Another thing you want to address in the language is when people are like kind of sold sold on your on your on your product but they're not completely sold because they're like hold on a second but how do I do this or hold on a second why do I do this and that's kind of like something that you need to address into your website in in in, in text right it's like the the people who are like not you need to like address uh, the objection. That's the word I'm, I was looking for. There's objection that say, "Well, I could use this, but it's gonna, it's it's not worth it over like pen and paper." Or, "Hey, I could do this." And the way that you show that is usually with data points. You're like, "Well, you know, people that use Jira and Google Docs or Dropbox and some other tools, they spend on average 50% more time." So addressing objection makes people think, "Oh, okay, fair enough." they thought about this that's actually true i would spend more time and then there's no way you know why the objection would uh stay you know on on, on its legs right like the objection is invalid suddenly so let's finally recap uh everything i've spoken about so the design i think there's definitely much more that can be done to improve the design whether it's images, the the layout of the the mobile responsiveness, the the layout of certain blocks or how they're structured, so I would give this like a one out of three, uh, just because there's a lot of more work that you can be doing. In terms of language, I see that you have a lot of text. I would consider like zipping the text together, trying to see if you can remove this extra features section, make them a little bit smaller make sure that everything reads quickly because as people go through your website all they read is just like the headlines and therefore i give your language like a one out of three because i think there's too much of it 
and I honestly think you can do a much better job just by cutting down on the text and also by addressing the objection and by talking about the value proposition higher up in the page and to talk more about the the benefit rather than the features and there and then finally in terms of blocks so the things that you have and the things that you're missing you have you know you don't have a risk reversal but that's fair enough i just feel like that you can tie up all these like extra pieces extra blocks so i give the the blocks like two out of three you have you have quite a few i just think it needs to be you know like cleaned up and and that's that's everything i have for you today i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you've learned a few things or at least you can see it from my perspective which usually helps a lot the founders understand how the average user or the you know the, the high-end user kind of uh, look at the website right like someone in startup someone in tech like me that's how they see your website so hopefully you will subscribe if you find this interesting uh this video interesting uh that would really mean a lot to me and i'll see you in the next one